clap your hands up to the Lord tonight. We are happy to be found in the house of the Lord on this evening. Amen. Yes, yes Lord. The house of God is becoming more and more valuable uh, as the times uh, begin to uh, move forward here. Amen. And to be without the, uh, without being in the house of the Lord is uh, for the saint and the believer is getting to the point to where it's almost like a fish being out of water. Amen. You will lose all of what you need to live and survive uh, in this world. Amen. And there are so many spirits uh, that are loose and that are trying to wreak havoc. Amen. In this world that we're living in. Amen. But we have the greater one located on the inside of us. And because we have him located on the inside of us, we have to ensure and make sure that we are feeding the right spirit, Amen. the right wheel. Amen. Amen. Because greater is he that sent us right. than he that is in the world. And the church is all right. Amen. Amen. The Lord's church is okay. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I was talking to a pastor today, and I, I told him, I said, the greatest thing that saints have to realize in times like this is that there is nothing wrong with the Lord and his church. Come on now, hallelujah. The devil is not defeating it. Hell is not overcoming it. Hell is not prevailing against it. Because he said, upon this rock, he said, I'm going to build my church. And he promised that the gates of hell would not prevail against his church. Amen. Uh, the book of Galatians, chapter number 3, verse number 22 uh, uh, we'll read down to verse number 29 and we'll just catch two more scriptures. If somebody could get Galatians chapter 3, verse number 22 and read to verse number 29 and someone else find me Romans chapter number 15 verse number 18. Galatians chapter number 3, verse 22 through 29. Romans chapter 15, verse uh, uh, 18 and Romans chapter 2 verse of number 13. But the scripture has included all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterward be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster, for ye are all called the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. Uh, Romans 15 and 18. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not brought by me, to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. To make the Gentiles obedient by what they say. But he didn't stop there. He said, I want to make the Gentiles obedient <clears throat> by word and by deed. In Romans 2 and 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Now the Lord spoke to me today and, and, and you know in, in lieu of just so much going on. Um, and the Lord spoke to me and, 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 and I said, Lord, you know, 
he, he spoke to me and he said, it is, it is gonna be, you know, you know, what what where's God, where's the church? You know, what 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 are we supposed to be doing, you know, in this time? And the Lord said, it is simple. He said, it's gonna be those that obey and are obedient to my word that's gonna make it. And, and that seemed simple when he said it. He said, but now is the time for the church to become meticulous in their living for me and the studying of my word and really obeying my word. It is not that God does not have power to strengthen, to keep, and to bless. But when we are not constantly evaluating our lives and having a constant relationship with him, is when we begin to have issues within our life. But God said, everything that you need, I have given to you to make it in this world that you are living in. It's all we need is application of the word in this time that we are living in. Everybody asks the question of what's going on in the world. Well, disobedience is what's going on. When you have a society that has been taught to question everything, and wants an explanation for everything, faith begins to diminish. Because faith cannot be always explained. Because you're trying to explain something that you cannot see. So when you start trying to explain faith to people, people always come back with something natural to throw away what faith is really about. But the church, we have to know better than to try to figure God out. And we talk about the Old Testament being our schoolmasters. God never showed the entire plan of anything that he was going to do. But he commanded men all the time to follow him. He told Abraham to get you from your kindred into a place that I'm going to show you. That means first do the first things of obedience. And then as you begin to go, I'll direct your pathway. And in the time we're living in now, we're going to have to walk by faith. And no matter what we see in this world, no matter what, what is going on in this world, you're going to have to keep your faith and your trust in God. I didn't say that. I said in God. That is where your hope is going to have to be. Jesus Christ, the Bible said, the hope of glory. That's our hope. Him keeping us. Him strengthening us. And Him helping us. Amen. And so, so, so uh, uh, we, we, we in the church, uh, we have been given uh, 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 instructions on how uh, to respond and to act in all the times that we're living in, and that is to obey the word of God. Because somebody said we need to just obey the word of God. Amen. Obey the word of God. Word of God. Uh, 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 Ephesians talked about the Old Testament uh, being our schoolmaster. Uh, uh, it, it brought us uh, to a, a certain place. Uh, schoolmasters, uh, it meant a boy leader. Or an example, a servant whose office is to take uh, the children to school. Uh, it was also uh, would be another word for a tutor. It, it, it taught us. It showed us things. And and what's interesting, what, what uh, this in this picture that's drawing the law was really the servant that took us to school. It was the thing that brought us uh, to school. Jesus uh, told. Uh, 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 us in Matthew chapter number 11 verse number 28 he said to come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest and then he said take my yoke upon you and learn of me see, see the first thing that we're going to have to start doing is learning about Jesus uh, uh, Paul stated to follow me as I follow Christ I, if, I, if, I, if I'm not following Christ, don't follow me because Christianity is not based upon man, it's based upon Christ. And he was and is our perfect example. Amen. So, so the first thing that we're going to have to understand, Jesus said, learn of me. And to learn of him, you have to study his word. But you also have to have a personal relationship with him. Come on now, hallelujah. Amen. You, you, you have to become, number one, 
just like him. And the only way that you're going to become just like him and, and, and understand him is to have his mind frame and to have his thought. The Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. How do you get it? Amen. This is why the born again experience is what we need. You need the spirit of God on the inside of you so that you can then understand the ways of God. And this is what's going to illuminate you. This is what's going to help you to understand why I walk the way I walk. Why I have to do this. But not only just understand why, but once you get it, it gives you the power to be obedient to the word of God. And, and that's what's missing today is obedience. And when you don't have an obedient spirit, everything else in you is going to judge and going to want to know why. Uh -oh. I mean, even when we were coming up, amen, your parents didn't want you asking questions every time they told you to do something. Uh, uh, go clean your room. Why well, I gotta go clean my room? Go do this. Why? Well, I mean, it it, it 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 frustrates you. It made you upset for your child to always ask you why. Why I gotta do this? Why I gotta go do that? Because I said so. That's what we that's what we would say. But when we get the spirit of God, our spirit would then agree with His spirit. The only time that. Uh, in my walk with God that my spirit did not agree with God's when I was not walking in his spirit but as long as I was praying up as long as I was doing what I was supposed to do and connected to him guess what what God loved I seen the love Amen. and the farther I got away from him I started picking up stuff come on now and doing things that I knew wasn't right but when I prayed through and this is what the enemy is trying to steal your relationship with God because once you are disconnected from God you get disconnected Disconnected from faith. And once you are disconnected from faith, you don't have a life to live spiritually anymore. The Bible told us that the just shall live by faith. Amen. And we, we're not going to see everything. But we have more to help us in this world than the world has for itself. Amen. We have an invisible God. Come on now. That's backing you and I up. Come on now. That when the bottom falls out of everything, we still able to stand because we have a, a hope that's greater than the hope of a world system. We have a God that sits high on the throne. And because he's there, we have a hope that's greater than what's seen. Come on now, hallelujah. My daughter texted me today and said, what does this mean? She snapped the picture. I guess they was talking about it at school. She said, government shut down. She said, what does, does this mean for us? I said, it means nothing. Come on now, hallelujah. It means nothing for us. Come on now, hallelujah. Because the God's economy is okay. Come on now, hallelujah. And God's going to take care of his people. But we got to hold on to our trust in him. Come on now, hallelujah. That no matter what happens, God is able to bless us and he's able to help us. But for him to do that, we have to be obedient. We have to be obedient. I mean, I mean, saints, we, we don't become pessimistic and downtrodden and, and, and hopeless uh, for no reason. When we become hopeless, it's because we disconnected ourselves, amen, from the God of hope. And, and that's, that's why we become hopeless. That's why we become pessimistic. But it's hard for me to be sad. Uh, 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 it's hard for me to be downtrodden about my situation after getting on my knees and, and praying and getting before God. Because God just starts to speak all kind of things to me, telling me that everything is going to be all right. Come on now, hallelujah. This is why he don't want you to pray. Come on now. This is why he don't want you to fast. This is why he don't want you to be okay obedient to the word of God because the more obedient you are the stronger you get come on now hallelujah the more you apply the word because baby food is no good just looking at it come on now you don't get energy from food come on now by just looking at food come on now I don't care how much you look at it it don't it don't calm the hunger that's within you oh but when you digest this word come on now when you apply the word and not just be a doer hearer of the word but a doer come on now then that that's when the benefits uh, begin to come forth uh, after you have done something with it. You want to stand on your feet and say, Lord, I want to be obedient to your word. Because that's what it's going to take. God says, it's going to be obedience in this day. Come on now, hallelujah. Everything that's not being obedient is going to be showed up. Everything that's not found in the 
upon the rock, the winds are gonna blow. What winds, Pastor? Come on now, come on now. Winds of false doctrine. Come on now. And everybody that don't have it rooted and grounded, they're gonna be torn and tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine. Come on now. There's a spirit of perversion. Come on now. That's flowing. Come on now. Throughout the atmosphere. Come on now. And it ain't taking. It ain't taking no. Uh, uh, any respect the persons. Come on now, hallelujah. It's attacking every office that they can attack. Come on now. And it'll come over in the church if the church don't stay rooted and grounded in the word. And if the church don't continue to be obedient to God. Come on now. These things can affect us. But we got the remedy. Come on now. We got the Holy Ghost on the inside of us. But he also gave him, gave us a written word. Come on now. That has promises in it. Come on now. And he gave us the Holy Ghost so that we might abide in him uh, and he in us. Come on now, hallelujah. So I got to get on my knees sometimes uh, and I got to let my mind leave this place uh, and I got to allow the Lord to bathe my spirit. Come on now, hallelujah. Because throughout the day, come on now, I done been around too much filth and I done been around too much negativity. Come on now, hallelujah. And I got to get somewhere uh, and as I begin to let God bathe my spirit, uh, I feel like going on. Come on now, hallelujah. We can't let the devil make Feel like it's all over. Come on now. Feel like you ain't gonna never become nothing. Amen. Lord, but if you get in his presence, I tell you, his presence is a spirit lifter up. His, his, his presence is better than bounding. Lord, I bound it. Come on now. It picks up spills, but the Holy Ghost picks up your spirit. Come on now. Hallelujah. He picks it up. Come on now. When the life has spilled over and got you feeling sad, the Holy and wipe up all of your pessimism, all of your hopelessness, and God gives you hope, amen. And I'm so glad to know him today. Come on, hallelujah. We need to know him. Amen. I just hear God saying, we need to know him. Amen. And to trust him, we may be seen. To trust him, that's why I said we got to trust him. He said, learn of me. He said, for I am meek and lowly in heart. He said, when you learn of me, you shall find rest unto your souls. When you won't have peace and rest, huh, then you need to go and relearn Christ. Amen. Relearn him how? You need to get on your knees. You need to be, get, you need to be in your word. Because guess what he said? Look, take, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, then you shall find rest. Rest for what? For your, unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Come on now. It's easy. Come on now. God said, when you in me, it's easy. Come on now. I, I, my, I'm not yoking you with nothing that you can't handle. Come on now. It's easy when you in him. But you got to learn of me first. Come on now. Do you know to learn? It takes the learn. You have to be, you have to apply yourself while you're being taught to learn something. Come on now. You just don't learn how to do something. Looking all over the place. And then, the, I mean, why that person saying that you need to do this? You should shoot marbles and everything, you're not going to know nothing when he done, amen. But when he says learn of me, that means be intentional. And right now in the church, we need to be intentional about learning Christ. We got to get back into the word and we got to be prepared. We are not sleep like the world is. And we don't want to be caught off guard. Come on now. But we ought to be digesting the word every day. And we ought to be applying it to our lives. And when the world speaks like that, there is no hope. We ought to be able to stand on our feet and say this world is not my home. I'm just passing through her and I've got everything set in it but all of my hope is set in Jesus because all things work together for the good of things that love the Lord and call the according to his purpose. It's so easy to die on negativity. It's so easy to drink your fuel of pessimism. Oh but when I get Jesus I learn how to what I call faith. You say, how do you know everything's going to be all right? Because I look, look past the White House and look past Congress and the Senate. I look to the heroes from which come my help because all of my help, church, our help comes from God. He shall provide all of our need, not according to the deficit, but according to his riches and his glory. He So at the end of the day, I've learned how to yet trust God. 
word. Nothing happens in your life that he didn't know. And if something happens negative in your life, a lot of times when things don't go the way that they ought to go, we can find probably find the problem in us or in our choices. Tell somebody God don't make God don't make mistakes. God don't make mistakes. But we gotta learn of him. And as a principal church, we'll never rest until we learn. We will never rest until we learn. Because every test fail, you're going to be tried again. And you will never rest because you fail the same thing over and over again. See, some of you got to settle in your mind that you're just going to be saved. Right. Some of you just got to sell out to God and say, you know what, God? I'm in it 100%. Come on now, hallelujah. Everything, there's no resolve. I'm not holding nothing back. I just want God. I just want to be more like him. You cannot learn fully about this New Testament Jesus without studying his Old Testament truths. You can say we already know these things, do we? We do not pray in repletion or by repetition, by uh, repletion, but we do learn by repetition. That means you got to go back and read it again. Amen. When you read the Bible, you always see something differently than you saw. You can read it 100 times, and every time it will be something will be new and something will be fresh to you. You never graduate from reading and studying God's word. Come on now, hallelujah. You never, you never graduate from engulfing in his presence. And, and listen, you all, uh, let, let, let's go back to the beginning. Because one thing that we got to understand is that if we're going to make it, God has put an order in our lives for us to be blessed and for us to make it in the times that we're living in. Let me tell you what the devil is doing. The devil is, 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 is making the church think that you can handle the church like you do the world. Yeah. He's making you think that you can question God like you question everybody else. He's making you think that uh, 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 it is, everything is subject to you and, and, nothing, and everything has that God asks you to do. You have to agree with it before you do it. Hey, hey, hey. Because this world has told us that if we don't agree with it, we really don't have to do it. Amen. But in the church, it's totally different. It's we, are, we, are, we are underneath the rule of God. See, what's supposed to happen when you receive the Holy Ghost, the kingdom of God in you, which is the Holy Ghost, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So when you receive the Holy Ghost, what's supposed to happen is the rule of God supposed to take over in your life. That means that God ought to be ruling over you already once you are filled with the Holy Ghost. That means that what he asked you to do because he's ruling over you, you obey him. Come on now, hallelujah, because he's supposed to be when the the Holy Ghost is ruling in your heart. Your heart automatically wants to obey the word of God when the Holy Ghost is ruling on the inside of you. It makes you line up in the manner that you're supposed to line up in. It makes your life pleasing before God. How? How does my life please him? God was so concerned about us being perfect uh, to where he said the best way for them to please me is for me to get inside of them uh, so that they can, so I can live through them the life that I want them to live. Uh, but here's where the problem come in. Uh, he did not remove the will of your flesh. Uh, when he placed his spirit on the inside, uh, he still gave you the ability uh, to follow his spirit uh, or to follow your will. Uh, but when we follow his, uh, we become a perfect picture uh, of what Christ would have us to be. Uh, when we follow the Holy Ghost, uh, that's in us. Uh, Paul said, walk in the spirit uh, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Uh, I wonder how people get so engulfed in things uh, they have been walking 
after their flesh. Let me tell you something about your flesh. It don't want to just give you everything at one time, but a little leaven. The devil understands when leaven a whole lump might just start it with a smile and a talk, but he's leading you to your death. For the Bible said that some as sheep led astray to their slaughter, but when we are led by the Holy Ghost, it's going to lead us to have a prayer life. When we are led by his spirit, that's what the Lord is saying. My people need to humble themselves and be obedient to my word. Because the Bible says that judgment will begin at the house of God. That everything that's not what it seems to be, God has a way of pulling the color off. So you might as well just be real and get a real relationship with God. Because everything that's not solid going to be sucked through the fire. And what's not connected shall be burned up. All of our works that we do, God knows our motives, and it shall be tried. So if my work shall be tried, how can I hypocrite with God? But God knows everything. When you come into the church, your main focus is to be saved. What would you do to get to heaven? I know a commercial said, what would you do for a crime like God? Well, what would you do to go to heaven? What would you lay down to go to heaven? What would you deny yourself to go to heaven? That's our problem. We got so caught up in the church that's in the earth that we forgot that we were supposed to be prepared ourselves to go meet God. Let's refocus ourselves because heaven is our aim. While we reach souls on the earth, we reach the souls to bring them to heaven. Oh, come on, somebody in this house because God is saying, just sit, give us the Holy Ghost and then say figure out how to lead. Right. He walked and showed an example. He prayed. Amen. He basked. Amen. He witnessed. Amen. He did works. He said now y'all gonna do all these works. He set up habit. He was baptized. Not because he was a sinner. But because he was trying to show you that you need it. To be righteous. This is what becoming righteousness. The dove descended from heaven. It couldn't get in him. Because the dove was a manifestation of the spirit. That was shown to him. That was put or placed upon him. So that John would recognize who he was. But the dove could not get in him. Because he was the dove manifested in the flesh. <laughs> he was the Holy Ghost. Come on now. <laughs> in that so it couldn't get in him because the fullness of the Godhead was already in that path. That's why it was only there to show a sign. Because when you saw Jesus, you saw God all day long. So he came to show the example. But what makes us without excuse is he lived on this earth with no sin and gave you the same spirit. So how are we going to excuse ourselves for committing sin when he gave us the same spirit? The issue is that we don't let the spirit control us. Well, the issue is we want to control the spirit that's in us like we can turn the Holy Ghost on and turn the Holy Ghost on. That's the problem. Too many people got too much control over God that's in them. Oh, the control starts to take over. You start talking about how you can lay it down and pick it up when you possessed by something. You shouldn't be able to just lay it down and pick it up. Possessed people, they don't have no other choice but to do what they're being possessed. 
No matter how much you go through, your ship ought to still proceed out of you. If you possess with God, that's what ought to pursue you proceed out of you. It's the power of God in you. The hope of glory. Well, hallelujah. You got to understand that God wants to bless us. Don't you let what's going around you make you lose confidence in God. Come on now. Come on now. Huh? Don't you let what happens <coughs> make you lose confidence in God. Let me tell you something, church. God, the Bible said, is hope. Right. Amen. He commanded men to be ye holy as I am holy. Amen. Huh? That's what he told them. And not every man is going to be holy. Amen. But when man mess up, it don't change the nature of God. Huh? And that's what we have to realize. Huh? That just because man might mess up, huh? it don't change who God is. Come on now, hallelujah. He's still holy. And the church got to keep confidence in their God. And you got to learn how to take up for your God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Maybe God is still real. Come on, everybody. Come on, ain't tipping. Come on now, everybody ain't sitting. Everybody ain't. Come on, somebody. Do I got any saved folk? Maybe I'm saved. It's able to keep you after 20 some years, but until it can't keep you. Yes, it can. Where I can control. 
You better know you better than anybody else. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I said, you better know you better than anybody else. You've been living with you longer than anybody else. You know where you want, where you ought to go, and where you better not go. You know what you can deal with, what you can't deal with. Some folk can deal with what you can't. Don't you put yourself in no bad place. Time to show how spiritual you are. There's some stuff you're fighting, some stuff you're fleeing. Yeah. Come on now, hallelujah. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Amen. Tell somebody you gotta learn how to run sometimes. Yeah. Oh yeah. There are some parameters. And see what we forgot, huh? To live successful is written in between the pages of your Bible. Don't you tell me everybody's gonna fall to a spirit of lust. Don't you tell me everybody's going to fall to a spirit of perversion. Don't you tell me everybody's going to fall to false doctrine. Don't you tell me every church going to go charismatic. Don't you tell me that in 2013 God not going to have no true holy people. Don't you tell me that. I'm going to tell you the people who are going to be true. The ones that get down into this word and obey this word and apply this word. I'm telling you the formula is there. Come on somebody. It is there. It asks you questions. Come on now. Before it tells you what to do. Can a man take fire in his bosom and not be burned? Can you walk upon hot coals and not be burned? It tell asks you questions. The Lord tell you what you need to do. He said, guess what? There's this thing called lust. He said, when you're young and you're youthful, flee that. Don't, don't try to fight it. Don't stay nowhere with my young people. I'm telling you, young ladies and young men, you can be holy. It's some stuff you just learn not to fight. You don't play with fire because fire will burn you. You don't play with lust because lust will beat you every single time you will lose. Don't go touch it, feel it, love it, because every time you will lose. Every single time. It has a track record of making you lose. You have to be careful. You say, what are you attacking today? The spirit of perversion and lust. And they don't have an age. Huh? Don't have an age. 13 year old boy registered as a sex offender. You say, how at 13? His older brother, who was 19, showed him pornography. He started looking it up. And then he looked up child pornography. And the FBI picked it up, traced it to the IP address, went there and took all the computers and found out which IP address, which computer was going to the site. It was the, the son, the 13-year-old computer that he was supposed to be doing homework on. They charged him and put him as a sex offender until he's 40-something years old. Because there are windows and doors that's open that has released a spirit in the atmosphere that our children, and not just children. Come on now. Some grown folk. Come on now. That's, that has been caught up in the spirit. Come on now. Hallelujah. And it don't, it's subtle. Come on now. That it can be going on for years. Come on now. Hallelujah. But it is a plant a seed that sooner or later is going to birth itself. Come on now. And we wonder why the Bible said the time is coming up when everybody thought shall be evil continually. The time is coming when the world shall become as Sodom and Gomorrah was because it's already been set in place. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. And guess what? But we can make it because we have a book of instructions that told us if you want to be holy, I'll tell you how to be holy. Set the wicked things before your eyes. Uh, guard your eyes. Uh, because what enters into the eye cake. Uh, come on now. If your eye be dark, uh, then your whole body shall be dark. Uh, but if your eye be full of light, uh, then your whole body shall be whole. Uh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. The devil is trying to give our young people corrupt minds. Uh, and then corrupt hearts. Uh, so they can do corrupt acts. Uh, but I stop by the tail of the devil. Uh, that I will be vigilant. Uh, we are called to be watchmen. That means we watch our children. But not only that, you husbands better watch your wives. And you wives better watch your husbands. Because if you don't, the devil will sneak in. And before you know it, they too far gone to be held. God 
God said, there's a spirit of perversion. Because it is so covert. It has found its way into a place where it can be delved into privately. See, that's what people don't like. We want anointing. We want our children to be saved. But, but we afraid to address issues that's already out there. And we lose by default. Yeah. All right. Yeah. One, I mean, they had cases. I mean, cases of, of children who were bound. One little boy was saying, his mama said he stayed so angry when he went at home and he was always fidgeting. I mean, he just, you know, I mean, it was always, when we going home? When we going home? When we going home? Well, that was, was possessed and addicted. Well, go in his room at 3 o'clock. They didn't see him. He was non-social, anti-social, wasn't ever hungry. I guess only ate at school. But when he was home, he was in his room for years. Corrupted him. He said that it got so bad to where he would be in public. And he said he'd be looking at looking at, at women and, 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 and wanting to bite them and wanting to choke them. And had all kinds of, just had to catch He said he had so, so much. To where a whole, I mean, and then you, where did this start? When? And see, we don't understand what is going on. See, because we think a demon gets in our children, you know, by somebody putting one in. We deal it in the spirit realm. And a spirit will use whatever is available. That's why the Bible said, give no place to the devil. We are the watchmen of our home. We have to set up guards. Because I'm addressing the spirit of 2013 right now. And the devil is making a fool out of the church. He think. He think. He's making a fool out of the ones who won't read, who won't study, who won't stay prayed up, who won't be Holy Ghost filled, who they're denying the power thereof. Because the power of holiness is the Holy Ghost in you. That's the power. And when we let it go dry, we gotta remember, unclean spirits use a revolving door. They check, they leave. They go on for a while, they say, I'm going to go back and check. That's why you got to have a consistent prayer life and relationship with God. Because the devil left Jesus for a season. But he always come back seeking opportunity. <coughs> he come by every now and then. It says, is there a way in? Is there a door open? Huh? Is there some kind of way I can get in? Huh? I, I can't get, I can't get, I can't get the daddy. He too prayed up. What about the children? Is there a door open? Because if I can't get them, I can get what's close. Seeking the Bible said, whom he may devour. He is very cunning. But if we stay prayed up, God will give us eyes that we might see, ears that we might hear. God will open your understanding to stuff going on around you. God, touch us. Touch us. There are churches that's losing young people like wildfire. There's a spirit of rebellion that's so the, the, one spirit brings in a whole lot of other spirits. And rebellion is the worst one. 
They daddy can't tell them nothing. They fuss with their mama. And they give the church folk trouble. Nobody that's an authority figure right. can tell them nothing. Yeah. We got to be careful. Because the Bible told us to teach them to be subject to authority. I don't care what they did. Submit yourself to be careful how you talk about your boss in front of them. But you better teach them how to be subject to authority. Be careful what you say about the police in front of your black boy. Because they'll beat his brains in if they be disrespect him on the street by himself. Come on, yes they will. That's right. And they've been taught rebellion. Police ain't no good. Police ain't no lie. And they jump out the car talking stupid. Every time. And then rebellion gets you. Come on. The Bible says you teach them to be subject to authority. Glory to God. Don't ever correct an authority figure in front of your child. Right. Ever correct an authority figure in front of your child. You just killed every influence that that person had in that child's life. Because every time they correct it and they don't like it, they're going to come to you. I used to remember, teachers say something, oh, I'm going to tell my mom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, Lord, I what well, I was wrong. What what that they was wrong, I just didn't want to be told nothing. Yeah, Baby, believe you one thing, you young folk. You're gonna be told something by somebody. Yeah. And for young black men that don't want to be told nothing on the streets, they lock you up and tell you something in jail. Lights out. I ain't ready to go to bed. Good night. Good night. <laughs> oh, God, you preaching tonight. Good night. I'm hungry. Too bad. You didn't get that from the commissary. You're going to start breakfast is in the morning. Oh, I don't eat this. That's what we got. So I want to teach you how to be subject while you're free. Because anybody that won't be subject to seeing authority will not submit themselves to God. That's right. That's right. Every authority in place, the Lord said, been put in place by me. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Because the, the powers that be are not a terror to the righteous. That's right. But they're a terror to them that do evil. You say they got some corrupt ones. They do submit. Even with your boss. It say the ones that's hard submit. That's it. If you submit. I got to call you something. The Lord spoke to me and said tell him to submit. Don't argue with him. Don't do nothing. I'm going to fight for us. He ain't got to worry about it. He ain't got to fight for himself. He said just tell him to submit. Okay. Give me five. Whatever you want to do. Do it, do it. The Lord said, come to submit. God said, I'm getting ready to bless the church and the people who submit and are obedient. Yeah, and everything, if you're going to see God doing things that you've never seen him do before, because he's getting ready to display the real church. Yeah. Because now, they mock in Christianity. Yeah, they are. But God said, I'm getting ready to raise the church. Amen. The true church. Amen. Oh. He said, everything else that's not standing like it should, I'm going to crumble. And when it all crumble, he said, that's when I'm going to raise the true church to the top so that everybody can see it. He said, the wind's going to blow, the rain's about to come, and everything that's not founded on a rock is going to fall. He said, but when it's all done, the true church will still be standing. And guess what? He said, so get in my word. Be
be obedient. Uh, keep your flesh under subjection. Past and stay like you're supposed to be. And when the winds are done blowing uh, and when the rain is done, uh, everything that's done fail can fall. Uh, he said, I'm going to raise up the true church. Uh, and I'm telling you, church, we can be a part of that. Uh, but we're going to have to get ourselves together. You don't want to be on the outside looking in. You want to be in the middle of what God is doing. And God said, tell my people, take your eyes off of me I say my body I present unto him a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is my reasonable service my mind belongs to him and I pull down every half out every imagination that exalts itself above the authority of God as a matter of fact I rebuke every speak every voice that speaks that's not of the Lord Jesus Christ don't you hold no conversation with the devil rebuke him and get away Resist the devil and he'll flee. He'll persuade you out of everything God has given you. There's no reason God gave me the message we were talking about temptation and how to overcome. Weak Christians that don't know the word, that's why they fall. Weak Christians that have stopped praying, stopped fasting, stopped doing what it takes to get you where you want. God done kept you this for weak or no him. We got in us what we need for success, and we got a recipe book that keeps us moving on. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. When you got something going on, I guarantee you, you'll find it in here, and it'll tell you how to defeat it. If it's the devil resist it, use the sword of the spirit. Use the word. If it's your flesh, kill it. Oh, it got the remedy for everything. Pass, pray. Yeah. How prayer is like a death to the flesh. Yeah. Huh? Fasting is a death to the flesh. Yeah. Huh? If it's lust, run. Yeah. Come on. Come on now. Hallelujah. Don't deal with it. Come on now. And when you run away, go kill the flesh. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm telling you how to make it. Come on now. You don't be saved. But can we be saved as long without no temptation? We learn how to defeat it. Greater is he that's in us. And I've learned that when he's ruling in me, I'm able to be strong in him. It's when he's not ruling. It's when he's not ruling. Huh? I'm attacking the spirit tonight. Huh? I'm going to pull the cover off. I know where his power coming from. We gotta get back to praying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Parents, we gotta get back sensitive. Yeah, amen. But the Lord can wake us up at a certain time and say, get up. Get up now. Go walk your house. Amen. Come on. Go check this. Go check that. That's it. Amen. Gotta get back to the point to where God said, get up and say, pray for your pray for this person right now. That's it, amen. Pray right now. You need to pray right now. You need to get down on your knees and pray right then. 
God, give that back. Give me that sensitivity back. Come on, give me that sensitivity back. We are in a war. And if the watchman misses his watch, it can cause the whole kingdom to fall. But the Bible tells us that if the, if the Lord uh, keep the watch, if the Lord, see the watchman watches the city, but he in vain. He watches in vain. But if the Lord keep watch, come on, yeah. He know how to put. He know how to drop things in your heart, drop things in your mind, tell you what you ought to be doing, when you ought. To, we got Lord help. Help us, Lord. I want my sensitivity. I want to be sensitive. I want to be sensitive. I don't want to lose one young person. I don't want to lose my own children. Come on now. I'm saying, Lord, whatever you gotta do. Come on, Lord, whatever you gotta do. Lord, whatever you gotta do, you do it. Lord, whatever you, I wanna say, come on now, I wanna say, Lord, whatever you gotta do, come on now, whatever, come on, Lord, if it's show me what I need, if it's something I, you all gotta learn how to pray. If it's something I need to be doing, Lord, show me. But Lord, whatever needs to be done, Lord, let it be done. We gotta get back passionate about our salvation. Passionate about our children's salvation. Passionate about somebody else's salvation. I want, my, I want that passion. I want that passion. Amen. God said you want to make it. Application of that word. Men are to always pray. Lifting up holy hands. Without doubt. And without doubt. Engulf ourselves in him. Commit ourselves to him. And what we commit, we can keep. Some of you, you need to come recommit your thoughts, your mind. You need to come recommit your body. Some of you need to just come recommit your entire life and say, Lord, from this day forward, I'm committed. You do the question is, do you want to be kept? Because he said, the Bible said, he's able to keep. What I commit. That means turn on trust. Give authority over. That you do. It's yours to direct, to tell me what to do, to tell me. It, it, I'm committing all of who I am into your hands and I'm subject to your rule. Yes, Lord. That's what that word means. Commit to turn on. I'm not going to buck you. I'm not going to fight. See, that, you know why he used commit? Because if I commit something to you, I give it to you of my own will. Amen. We want God to wrestle us mm, to keep us from doing something. No, he said, if you, if you willfully commit yourself, I'll keep you. Now, we want to be on our way to do wrong. We want God to wrestle us down and hog ties to keep us from going. You know you while you going, you know you ain't you're not supposed to be. No demon can hold you. Some of you think you got a demon, you ain't got nothing but a wild flesh that you need to keep. You ain't got no devil. You ain't reprobate yet. You wouldn't be here if you was reprobate. That's right. You got flesh you need to keep. It needs to die. That's right. All right. Because if you don't kill the flesh, you don't get it. It's gonna kill you. Yeah, that's right. It's gonna kill you. They that sow to their flesh shall reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, you shall reap everlasting life. God said people are so caught up because what they have been sowing. There's our succeed time, and there's always pause. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You don't see the seeds people have planted until the crop come in. Amen. But I can.
can tell you tonight in closing. What's amazing about our God, he'll tell you that whatsoever a man sow, that shall be free. But I want to show you how powerful he is. Because he did it for all of us. Right. Before we came to him, we all sold into sin and deserved death. But now he turns around and says, whatsoever you sow, that shall you reap. He said, well, wait a minute now. I'm still Lord yeah. of the harvest. Yeah, yeah. So that means when you come to him, yeah. you might deserve death, but he's able to give you a different harvest if you repent, yeah. if you commit. He'll change what you ought to receive and give you what a righteous person is supposed to receive because the righteous, his righteousness is then placed upon you. He said that if we, John said, if we commit sin, he's faithful, faithful. and just to forgive us of our sins if we confess our sins and forsake them. God is awesome. Oh, yeah. He left no room for us to fail. Yeah, my God. Thank you. He gave us every recipe Thank to God. succeed. Thank you, Jesus. And you wonder why on judgment day there will be no mercy. Mm. Because I gave you everything yeah. to yeah. 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 succeed. I told you to fellowship one with another because iron sharpened iron. Right. <clears throat> I told you corrupt communication, corrupt good manners. I told you to come out from a money and be separate. I gave you the recipe to be successful. Yeah. 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 So when I'm messing up, I look at what I'm doing to mess me up. No, I ain't messing up now. No, I'm trying to help somebody. Because somebody needs to grab their life. They say, you know what, Lord? I'm coming to commit. I'm going to recommit my mind. But I need to recommit your eyes. Amen. Some of y'all need to recommit your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you need to recommit your spirit. Some of you got bitterness and hatred. Some of you got stuff in you that needs to go. Because the devil will use that to choke you. That's what these altars were for. It was a place of healing. I give it to you. I give it to you. I don't want you. We come to the altar. Lord, take this. God won't take nothing from nobody. If you give it up or lay it down, he'll put his foot on top of it and keep it down. But he's not going to take nothing you're not willing to lay down. No, just take this from me. When the Lord delivered me out of smoking, from smoking cigarettes, since I was a 13-year-old boy, when the Lord delivered me, I grabbed them cigarettes after being rebuked by God on the job. I came home, I said, Lord, I can't stop with these cigarettes. I said, but Lord, I don't want to smoke them. I said, I'm going to take them, and Lord, I'm going to put them in this trash can. And I went back and got on my knees. I said, God, I'm going to lay them down. I said, now, Lord, strengthen me and deliver me. And from that day forward, the Lord touched me. I hadn't had a taste for them ever since. Right. Yeah. 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 Because I desire to please him. I desire. I wanted to tell that man about being baptized. But God rebuked me and said, you can't do it that way. Uh, Not smoking a cigarette. And I said, I'm going to have to talk to you later. Broke my heart. But you know what happens today? People don't get broken no more. No conviction. Past fear. Hard heart. No, God forgive me. Do it again. God forgive me. 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 Everything God said, He said for a reason. He said, a broken and 
contrite spirit. See, because man in your mouth, God looks at your spirit. Amen. He knows you just saying forgive me, but forgive me, Satan. But your heart far from you. Yeah. <clears throat> Some folks saying forgive me to go do it again and look guilty. Right. But not no more, Lord. No more. Stand in your feet.